Five Steps for Successful Link Prospecting with Sinead McClarty. The In Search SEO podcast is brought to you by SimilarWeb, helping you build better SEO strategies with digital intelligence, insights, and data. Hey, it's David. What are the key steps for successful link prospecting? That's what we're discussing today with a lady who is a self-proclaimed generalist, both in work and in life. She's worked in digital marketing for the past five years and is currently digital PR specialist at Seeker Digital. A warm welcome to the InSearch SEO podcast, Sinead McClarty. Hi, thank you for having me. Hey Sinead, thanks so much for joining. You can find Sinead over at seeker.digital. So today, Sinead, you're sharing five steps for successful link prospecting. Starting off with number one, identify the type of site you want to be featured on. Yeah, so basically, whether you're working for a client or just looking to do some link prospecting for yourself, it's helpful to identify the type of site that you would like to see your um, business mentioned on and to consider things like relevance as well because it informs the direction that you go in prospecting if you kind of just throw ideas out there it's very easy to get sidetracked into finding sites which aren't necessarily the best for your aims so consider what it is that you want out of a campaign whether that is to get more eyes to your brand or if you want to get a specific audience to notice you um, and find sites that align with those goals And when you say identify the type of site, are you just talking about industry or are you talking about things like um, actually technology behind the site and the audience that they're aimed at or some other elements instead? In in very SEO fashion, it depends. It can be an industry that you specifically want to go after or sometimes it's not an industry. Sometimes it's about how large their audience is. Sometimes it's about the kind of service that is provided from that particular site. Like for instance, if you wanted to do a campaign around a food product, do you want to go out to lifestyle sites or do you want to perhaps who like do operate within the food industry? Or do you want to go out to specific trade publications in the food industry? So really considering the benefits of whatever type of site or what it is that you want to get out of it to ascertain what sites basically offer that thing that you're looking for. Now that sounds like a fairly manual process. Is it possible to automate? In some respects, yes. I think that you can rely on, say, tools to plug different topics and keywords into in order to give you a little bit of a steering direction on where to start so that you don't have to think about it so much if you're not entirely sure about yourself. It's really beneficial to have a general knowledge of what's going on in your industry and the type of sites that you're trying to get a hold of because it's not just good for prospecting, it's also good for the rest of the SEO process. So does that mean link building should be done internally and not outsourced to an agency? Not necessarily, because you have to basically choose the right agency, choose an agency who's willing to do the work to get to grips with what it is that you do in your industry, to take that time to find out what the in-technical terms are for medical parts that you're trying to get more be, um, more eyes to, and do that particular research and potentially work in collaboration, because even though those agencies might not operate directly in your industry at the moment, if you collaborate with them, they are likely to be able to get the best out of your SEO efforts, which is what their expertise is in. And number two is have a look at the kind of site and find out what they're talking about and linking to. This is all about figuring out a way into linking all of the different sites to together. Just having a look at what kind of sources that they are quoting in the articles or what kind of names that they are mentioning in the articles so that when you you have a starting place to plug those 
bits of information into like backlink tools or um, content explorer tools. And because it's something that is already being used, you kind of have a little bit more assurance that it's not just an idea that you or a keyword that you think is relevant. It's something that is actually relevant to the sites that you're looking for. Any preferred tools that you'd like to recommend? Yeah. So as simple as it sounds, a good place to start is Google News or Apple News. Just having a look at what types of articles are trending for each individual category that you're trying to go after. Also, I find it really helpful to use, it kind of mixes in with the next step, but using backlink tools that you have available to you. So there is Majestic who has a really lovely backlink tool um, and quite extensive. And they're using the filters within those to specify date ranges. Also things like a content explorer tool from Ahrefs is a really good place to start if you're looking for particular names um, that are mentioned. So there is a whole a whole host of them which are really lovely to use. Great. Okay. Well, it's good to get a flavor of the ones that um, are important for you. So bringing us on to point number three that you kind of touched upon, identify the parts that are unique and specific to the industry that your dream sites belong to. Sure. So I'm sure that you are very well aware that AI is a massive topic at the moment. And so if you were to, for instance, plug chat GPT into a content explorer tool, for example, with the aim of building a campaign around an AI service that you might be rolling out, you will quite likely find a whole lot of um, sites which are relevant, but are mixed in with a whole lot of sites that aren't because there are so many industries that are talking about AI and its influence in how they're running and the future of that particular industry that ChatGPT as the most visible site is, or one of the most visible sites, is the one that gets talked about the most. So it sounds like it's a good idea with loads of potential to draw in loads of relevant stuff, but the work to get to the list of sites which are useful to you is going to be a great deal. A better tactic is to find a site or, I mean, a source that is specific to AI or is just technical enough to only interest the AI industry. So for example, if you were to look at the backlinks of Google's BARD announcement, you might find a more condensed um, specific list of tech and some finance probably and business sites who might be better to pitch to and it's a shorter list for you to work from. So this is a step kind of to save yourself. And it's not just for tech things either. If you want to put it into lifestyle industry to- terms, if I was to, for instance, look at Barbie core as a topic and plug that into a keyword tool, and try and find all of the sites ranking for that. And it was an interior design or a furniture brand that I was trying to do that for. I would get a whole lot of interior design and furniture stuff, but I'd also get a whole lot of clothing and fashion stuff because Barbie Claw is not just for interior design. But if I were to, for instance, go and plug in the specific name of the person who did the um, set design and the interior design for the Barbie movie, you get a lot of interior design sites. So just be making sure you're specific so that you don't have to take a large period of time to filter through all of those results. And you try and use some metrics to attempt to rank those sites in order of preference that you'd like to get a link from, or is it all about niche relevance? A mixture of a bit of both. Like I personally, when I have pulled all of this data, which kind of falls into the next step, try to segment it using things like metrics so that you know, okay, this is a really high tier site and I really want to get a link on there. Let me pull out a handful of those so that I can do a more personalized pitch, have a little bit of research time around what they've covered recently in their style of writing and how they like to be pitched to. And then like cutting off sites which don't have that much traffic, if that's what I'm after in terms of my campaign and 
also being led by things like DR, if you want to have a PR campaign rather than a, a traditional link building campaign, you might want to go for sites which have the higher DR and segment that way. But niche relevance is always going to be impor- important. So it, it's important to do both, basically. Okay. Um, and that um, takes us up to step four, export, refine and sort to some degree we've we've covered. Yeah. So while, whether still in the tool that you've used to pull all of these sites or whether in Excel file, make sure that you filter at the very highest level sites, which you know off of the back of whether it's metrics or whether it's like something that's within the title, which would tip you off to the fact that that's not going to be the best site for you because for instance, it's mentioning something which is completely irrelevant. Make sure that you sort through all of that at a top level before going into individual sites to inspect. Again, it's a resource management, time management thing. You can often tell without having to click onto anything by just looking, oh, this this site has a traffic of five. It might be relevant, but I'm probably not going to get much from it. Or... For instance, I'm writing about AI in a tech sense, or that's what I want my campaign to be. But this is talking about AI's impact within the screenwriting industry. And it's a site which from its domain, I can tell is about screenwriting predominantly. So they're probably not going to want to hear about that unless it's specific to screenwriting. Just having a top level sort through that and getting rid of stuff at that level to save you time and also taking the time at that point to segment sorting things into specific groups you you might be looking through all of these sites and see okay these are all relevant but this type of site is a lifestyle site and this type of site is a business site so the pictures that i do to these two different sites are going to have to be two different pictures Let's separate them so that I have those two specific p- pitches for what their audiences are. And there's a higher chance of me having success in this campaign. And yeah, just if, like I mentioned before, if you have sites which are particularly noteworthy and have some relevant articles, which they've recently done, setting those aside as well to perhaps do a more specific targeted campaign for those. Taking us up to step number five, review. So this sounds like a bit of a wishy-washy step, but I think sometimes because life is just busy, we don't give ourselves enough time to reflect on why our successes have been successful and why our failures or not failures, why things that have not turned out as well as we wanted have had that result. The reason why I got to this point of having these stages of prospecting is through subconsciously making notes of that works, that doesn't work. I need to tweak this a little bit. So each industry is different and I'm not necessarily saying that this is a one size fits all thing, but whatever you do, it's really important to make note of how things have gone so that you can have a think about how to change things for the better and also so that if it's a good result you have the highest chances of replicating it and if it's a bad result then you're getting something valuable in the form of a learning of how to make it better we're not allowed to fail we're of course allowed to fail but i don't see a failure as a pure failure if you take something from it at the end of the day sounds good let's finish off with the Pareto pickle so Pareto says that you can get 80% of your results from 20% of your efforts. What's one SEO activity you would recommend that provides incredible results for modest levels of effort? So I would recommend rather than when you're doing your prospecting and you're trying to figure out your campaigns, rather than immediately going to, I need to create something new, have a look at what you already have, whether successful or not and see if it can be reused. I think a lot of times we are eager to prove 
ourselves and our ingenuity and our creativity. But sometimes you already have something in your back pocket, which has worked really well. You just need to tweak it a little bit. So yeah, don't give yourself a lot of work and a hard time. Have a look at what you already have and don't forget that it's there. Just have a little bit of a revisit. I've been your host, David Bain. You can find Sinead McClarty over at seeker.digital. Sinead, thanks so much for being on the In Search SEO podcast. Thank you. And thank you for listening. Check out all the previous episodes and sign up for a free trial of the Similar Web platform over at similarweb.com.